Welcome to the Accessible Kitchen Island Seminar. In this video I'm going to cover the process of creating a custom island that meets the NKBA accessibility guidelines. You can add this island to your own library and use it for future designs. I would like to thank Curran Cabinetry and Design of Madison, Wisconsin for allowing me to replicate this island they designed for a project. The island that's used will be in a separate accessible kitchen seminar if you're interested in learning more. Let's go through the steps to build this island. As I build the island, I'm actually going to build it right next to the completed island that you can see in your plan view on the left side of the screen. I'm going to begin by placing a few of the base cabinets off to the right, and then we're going to resize them and begin to evolve the island. First base cabinet that I place is going to be a 34 inch high. All of the cabinets will be 34 inches high for the island. I'm going to click on this cabinet and I'm going to resize this to 36 inches wide. I'm going to take and make a copy of that cabinet and I'm going to use the reflect about the back side to also have a 36 inch cabinet. And I'm going to resize the depth of this to be 15 inches. And let's make our first modification on this rear cabinet so that I can make the change and I'm going to make one more copy of it on the other side. On the face item for the drawer, as I highlight that, I'm going to switch that to a blank area and I'm going to change the height of that blank area to be three and a quarter. This is going to allow me to have a rail right below the countertop and be able to still open those doors. I'll make a copy of that cabinet and again reflect it around the side of it. And I'm going to resize this one back to 24 inches and then I'm going to make the width of it 42 inches. Since this is an accessible island this is going to give me the space for the clearance that we need right in this area right down here. On the first cabinet I place I'm going to create a bank of three drawers. On the face item I'll switch this to be a drawer and then I'm going to use the split horizontal and on the top drawer I want this to match where the accessibility clearance is going to be on the other side. I'm going to set the clearance of this or the height of this drawer to be four and three eighths and then on the second drawer I'm going to change that to be seven and five eighths. And then on the general panel I'm going to change the toe kick to not have any depth on it. Set that to be zero. And then on the molding I need a furniture molding. I'll click the add new button, choose the profile, adjust the position from the bottom and then for the height of this molding I'm going to set it to be 4 by 9 sixteenths. For this small end cabinet over here I'm going to create a copy of the smaller cabinet I've created here. Control C on the keyboard and I'm going to paste that using Control V on the keyboard. I'll rotate it around and I'm going to set this cabinet to be 6 inches in depth and then I'm going to use the point to point move and I'm just going to snap that into place off of the other cabinet. I am going to adjust the cabinet label. If I zoom in there's a little move handle right in here and I'll do the same thing on this cabinet as well. We'll move the nomenclature of that cabinet into the box itself with those smaller cabinets. Let me move over to the 3D view. From this view I'm going to go ahead and use the material painter. I'm going to pick up the distress paint from the existing island and I'm going to apply that to the island that we're working on including the molding itself. And the molding itself I didn't apply that or the toe kick changes to the other cabinets. That's an afterthought so what I can do is I can actually use the object eyedropper tool. I can click on the cabinet that I want and then using the scoping found in the lower left hand menu I'm going to clear all of the items in here and for the toe kick let's just type in toe. I'm going to choose the depth and then I also want that furniture molding on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the molding material and now I can come around and I can apply that same change to the other cabinets and you'll see the molding then get applied to those. Now the next cabinet that I'm going to place is going to be a free floating cabinet, this small cabinet that's right directly below the cook range. Let's come over here and I'm going to place a base cabinet in this area. I'm going to go ahead and resize this in the 3D view. So I'm going to snap this out to be 42 inches. I'm going to go ahead and select the height of it and I'm going to pull it up and before I finish this let's open it up and make a few changes into the cabinet dialog. I'm going to set the height of the cabinet to be 7 inches and the depth of it to be 15 inches. We'll move the finished floor to top to 34 inches. And then on the toe kick, I'm going to remove the toe kick altogether by putting a zero in there. And then on the drawer face item, see if I can increase the height of that slightly. Actually, it's going to force me to maybe delete this or change this to a blank area. Let me change it to a blank area right below there. And now I'll see if I can come in here and increase the height of this. That'll allow me to match the other 
cabinet drawer front on the right side. Now let's zoom out and take a look at the completed island. A few things we're going to need to do. One is to place the legs and then I also need to come in here and place the curved legs and I don't actually have anything that like that exactly in the library because this is 15 inches in depth so I'll draw those in an elevation view using a polyline solid. And right below these legs you'll notice that the furniture molding continues around the back of the cabinet and all the way around the side. I'm going to show you how to create those and I'm just going to use a very small cabinet. Let's go to our plan view to create those. I'm going to place two very small cabinets right below the accessible area for the knee clearance before I do that, I'm going to select the three drawer bank. I'm going to set that as my default cabinet. So all future cabinets will then have that same properties with the furniture molding. I will need to adjust the size and it's just going to make it a little bit faster. So I'm going to go in and place a base cabinet. We'll just place it out here off to the side and let's go through and make some modifications to this. Now the sole purpose for this is to make a very small cabinet that has this furniture molding on the bottom. And I'm just going to set this to be four inches by three inches and then on the depth I'm going to set it to be 15 inches. For the countertop overhang we'll set that to be at zero. I'll close the dialog and then position the cabinet. Let me zoom in. I'm going to just use the point to point move and we'll just simply grab that and pull it back here. I'm going to create a copy of that. We'll use the copy button reflect around the main cabinet and let's go back into the 3D view and take a look. And I'll just use the material painter on the countertop material and cover that countertop up. Again, I'm just going to use that to get the furniture molding that wraps around that area. The next thing I want to do is extend my countertop. You can see that it extends past the accessibility area for the cook range. And I'm going to use an, a couple of legs. Actually, I'll use a leg on all four corners. To create our custom countertop, Let's do this from our floor plan view so we can easily select these cabinets and convert them to a custom countertop. In the plan view you can see those small cabinets that we created. I'm going to suppress the labels for those. You can do that inside of the cabinet dialog. On the label panel just click the suppress button. Now I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to select the five cabinets. While they're highlighted, there's an option in the lower edit menu called Generate Custom Countertop. This tool is going to create a custom countertop that will make it very easy for me to modify. I'll go ahead and use our snaps. And then what I want to do in the back area is pull this back to get the overhang. So I'm just going to pull this back. And what might help is to actually run the end-to-end -end dimension tool to get the countertop. So I'm going to use the end-to-end -end dimension tool. And I'm just going to run it from one side to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the front. We'll just snap that into place. Slide our dimensions over so we have enough space. And then we'll use this dimension tool to resize our countertop. On this edge that's highlighted, you can see with the red square, I'm going to click on the dimension 52 and 7 8 And then on this side, I'm going to go ahead and put in 103 to move that out for the clearance in the seating area. Now that that's been sized, I'm going to go ahead and place the legs and then we'll take a look at creating the shapes for the area underneath of the cooktop. Let's go ahead and place our cabinet legs. I'm going to slide this cabinet up three inches. In the library, I'm going to use a search and I'm going to type in spindle leg. And then I'm just going to browse down and we'll find one of these spindle legs in here. Place that in the design and let's go ahead and resize this after we place it and then we'll use the copy tool to position it. To fit right underneath the countertop, I'm going to make that 32 and a half inches and then for the width and the depth, I'll set it to be 5 inches. Using the point to point move, I'm going to click on the corner and I'm going to position that right in this area right here. Now I'm going to use the copy tool and I'm going to reflect that around the countertop and then I'm going to hold the shift key down, grab both of those legs, use the copy tool and reflect it around the countertop in this direction. So let's take a look in 3D. 
You can see our legs are well positioned. Again, using the material painter, we can click on the cabinet color, change this to the room mode, and it will spray all things that are white to be the same color. Next, I want to go through and create this profile molding that's in this area right here. If I toggle my camera on, you might be able to see this using the technical illustration. There's an edge profile that's right on the bottom side of this to support the countertop that goes between the legs. Let me show you the process of how I would do that. From the plan view, I'm going to use my line tool and I'm just going to come in here and draw out a line and then I'm going to convert that to a molding polyline. Now that I have that selected, I might square this up into the center of this. In my lower edit menu, I'm going to use the convert to polyline. There's the default molding polyline that I'm going to convert this to. I'm going to go ahead and set the height of this. Let's set it to be 30 inches and 3 eighths. These are from the subfloor, so it's slightly different than the finished floor. And then you need to choose a molding. Let's go back out to the library. And if I choose a similar profile that we use for the furniture, let's take a look at what happens here. I'm going to ignore the height of this for now. And let's take a look at what's going to happen with the profile. Notice that my profile is at the top of this. So let's go back into the 3D view and look at it. So on the finish island, the profile's on the bottom. On the new island that we're building, you don't see a profile on the bottom. That's because what's happening is the profile is actually generating on the top. A little bit difficult to see in the translucent view, but it's generating on the top. So let me show you how I'm going to force that to go onto the bottom. From the project browser, take a look at my CAD details. I have a new CAD detail that I created called Molding Detail. And when you open that up, you'll see that my molding profile is on the bottom of the profile. Let me show you how I've done this. If you open up the library and we search for this profile that's CA27 that we used on the furniture rail, I can open that up in the project browser and you'll see that the profile is at the top. If I right click on it, I can place that molding profile over next to the existing one that's turned upside down. You can then rotate this while it's still highlighted, you can now use the Add to Library button you'll find in the lower edit menu. That places it in your library. You can give it a good name, and I'm just going to call it CA27 down. And now I can apply that molding profile to the island that is in question. So let's go back to the floor plan view, highlight the molding, and let's change that molding to the one we just created. So let's replace that. We'll come into the area that we added that into our user catalog. Here it is. You can see that it's now pointing down. And then we'll just size it. In the sizing, I'm going to set it to be 3 inches in height. On the width, I'm going to set it to be 2 and a quarter. And then I'm going to change this extrude from inside. And let's go back in and take a look at this in the 3D view. You may have to adjust your molding profile depending on how it came in. I drew those to the center of the legs. And in the translucent view, you can see that molding profile profile is now on the bottom of that rail. Now what I want to do is go into an elevation view if we zoom out a little bit and I want to draw these legs in an elevation view. These are custom legs. Let's assume they don't exist in the Chief Architect Library and I'm just going to draw those as a custom polyline solid. From the plan view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to take a elevation view and let's just draw it right through the island. I'm going to switch my view to the technical illustration, make it a little bit easier. Let's zoom in and take a look. Again, here's the curvature that we're after, and I'm just going to do something pretty similar to that. Let me zoom in a little bit closer. I'm going to use the rectangular polyline tool, and I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to draw a rectangular polyline so that it comes right down onto the top of the cabinet. You can select these edges if you wanted to make sure the bottom of this edge is exactly three inches. We could set that to be three inches at the bottom. I'm going to change the endpoint and then that will resize it. I'm going to do the same thing up here. We'll open up that line segment and let's assume that we want it to be five and a half inches. So now I just have a basic trapezoid shape. Using the break tool, I'm going to come down here, find the midpoint, click, create a break, and then I'm going to use the curve option. We'll curve the top, we'll curve the bottom. Using the little diamond, we'll just kind of create the shape that we're after. I'm not going to be too specific for this. And now I have the shape that I'm after. Let's convert this to a solid. Lower edit menu, convert to a polyline solid. That's going to prompt me for the thickness, and we'll just set it to be 15 inches or the depth of the cabinet. And then from the plan view, we'll position where that solid is exactly. It looks pretty good. 
and back over in the 3D view you can see where that's come in and I'm just going to use the copy tool reflect about the center of this cabinet and now I have those two legs into place. Now one detail that I don't have is I did not put end panels on this area. There's a setting in the cabinet to put end panels on but this leg that we just created is not a cabinet and if we zoom out past the other end you can see that I have end panels on those cabinets. Let me show you what I've done here. I'm going to take the cabinet that's on the very end. It's a six inch cabinet. I'm going to use the copy reflect button. I'm going to create a copy of that reflected around the countertop and then we're just going to kind of bump it into place and I'm also going to set the width of it to match the outside of that cabinet. And with that done, I'm going to make a very thin cabinet. Let's go ahead and make the change here to about a half inch. On the depth, we'll just make that exactly a half inch. On the door and drawer hardware, I'm going to come down to the handle information and I'm just going to choose the option for none. Now at the top here you may want to remove the blank area. There is a blank area on the other cabinets on the back. Kind of a style choice. I'll just click on this blank area. Go ahead and remove it and that should be the change that I need. Maybe remove the label from being displayed on the label panel. Come down and suppress the label and then as we come back into the 3D view you can see that we now have those panels placed in the view. Now the next step is to place our cook range in here. Let's go ahead and switch this back to our technical illustration. I'm going to have my cook range actually span different areas. So we'll browse out into the library, place our cook range and our ventilation. Let's go ahead and open up the library and grab those items. So I'm going to come down to the Gagano catalog and I'm going to find an induction cooktop that will work for the needs. So we'll just browse down, find the induction cooktop that we're after. And I'll just come over here and place that in this back cabinet and then we'll move it. And you can move these items. You may have to press the tab key to get that and I'm just going to pull it forward to the correct position in the front of that cabinet. Next I want to find a downdraft ventilation. So I'm just going to come down into the Wolf cooking and I'm looking for the downdraft ventilation. And once I find that I'll also place this over. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get this. Let's go into our plan view to position that exactly. I'm just going to go ahead and slide that over. Again you can use your center command. Center it on the cabinet or the cook range. And then back in the 3D view. zoom out a little bit. You can easily grab the chairs and electrical, place those items. Let me show you the process of adding this into your library once you've added all of the accessories that you need. Draw a marquee around these items. You usually don't include the dimensions. Grab all of the items and then use the make architectural block item. And once you've done that you can use the add library. And then I usually like to give it a good descriptive name and now you can easily reuse that. Also in my personal library if you scroll up, I've created an accessibility folder that I've used some of the common things, certainly from the videos that I've been making on the accessibility. These are all things that you can reuse for your design work. Well, that wraps up this video. As you can see, I've added the island as an image and the elevation view into the layout sheet. And then I've also included it in the entire accessible kitchen plan, which is a separate video you can watch. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.